That's okay. No, 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 don't be silly. Everybody sees Santa's gotta get something. Here, pull out your little paw there. There you go. Today, we're having a serious conversation about Tylenol, AKA acetaminophen. Now, this is a CGM derailer that you may have never heard about or just maybe never understood. Today, I wanna to give you some information straight from Dexcom, including breaking down the pharmacology of this drug. And at the end of this video, I'll share with you a CGM that does work with Tylenol, as well as some alternative pain relievers to consider that might help you stay in range. So let's go. Welcome back all my type ones, type twos, one and a halfs, Mahdi's and Lattas. My name's Ben, I'm a firefighter paramedic and a type one diabetic. And if YouTube content specific for diabetics like you is important, subscribe to this channel and I'll do my best to keep you informed on what's going on in the world of diabetes. Now, if I was to make a list of things that are the most important to a diabetic, I would definitely include CGM reliability or accuracy on the top of that list. Um, in reality, my list would look something like, number one, affordable insulin, number two, juice boxes or the juice box podcast, that's really good too. And number three, CGM accuracy. Now the accuracy of a continuous glucose monitor can depend on many different factors like CGM type, model, and even expiration dates, not to mention calibrations, as well as placement. And last but not least, what drugs you're taking. So let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. What does Dexcom have to say about this? Now, if you go to the Dexcom interference page, links in the show notes, you will find a unique list of medications that Dexcom suggests that you avoid when using their CGM. And the list is actually only two different medications to avoid. Uh, and this is due to the risk of CGM readings that would be false. Now, the first is hydroxyurea. And this is a medication used for the treatment of diseases, including cancer, and sickle cell anemia. The second is acetaminophen, AKA Tylenol. Now, like I said previously, the particular CGM device that you're using is gonna play a role in whether or not you can expect to be out of range. Now, if you go to the Dexcom interference page, uh, you will notice that the G4 Platinum and the G5 mobile models, Tylenol is absolutely contraindicated for use with these two models. In other words, it's a big no-no. However, if you read your G6 handbook, honestly, who reads the handbook? Well, I do. So you don't have to. <laughs> Under the system safety statement section, there is a subsection called interfering substance risks. Now here you will find that acetaminophen is still listed. However, when using the G6 system, Tylenol is approved for use with adults as long as you don't exceed a maximum dose of one gram or 1,000 milligrams every six hours. And that's good because if you look at the Tylenol bottle, uh, this is also the adult prescription dose for over-the-counter extra strength acetaminophen. So as long as you don't overdose yourself on Tylenol, you should be just fine. Now I almost tested this for you guys, but to be honest, Tylenol overdoses are very dangerous and very scary things. So don't mess around with it. So why does Tylenol cause a rise in CGM blood glucose readings? So to give you a brief history, the FDA approved acetaminophen back in 1951, and it belongs to a drug class called analgesics and antipyretics, that is pain relievers and fever reducers. Now the drug also has anti-inflammatory attributes, which is why they prescribe it to persons suffering from arthritis. Now the most common side effect of Tylenol is hypersensitivity reactions, serious skin reactions, kidney damage, anemia, and reduced number of platelets in the blood. Now those last two, those are clues as to why Tylenol can cause an abnormal reading. As explained in this video about compression lows, our CGMs don't read glucose levels in the blood. They do, however, read interstitial fluid through a complicated mathematical algorithm. The CGM converts this reading into a digital number which we call a blood glucose reading. So interstitial fluid consists of water solvent containing sugars, salt, fatty acids, amino acids, coenzymes, hormones, neurotransmitters, white blood cells, and cell waste products. And the veins in the arteries of the circulatory system have a reduction in red blood cells, as could be the case when taking Tylenol, 
the interstitial fluid that your CGM reads also becomes unbalanced. And since your CGM is calibrated during a homeostatic or a balanced state, a fluid imbalance causes the CGM to miscalculate your blood glucose or your interstitial fluid, thus giving you a false reading. In other words, Tylenol causes your CGM to do bad math which is why I never take Tylenol because I'm already really bad at math. And that's not good if you're a diabetic, especially type one. So alternatives, if you are in pain and you need a good fever reducer without affecting your circulatory lymphatic system or messing up the math on your CGM, I would say a good alternative would be ibuprofen. This is also an anti-inflammatory. It reduces uh, fever and pain as well. As always, speak to your physician before you're making any medical decisions. Now, what about alternative CGMs? Well, there is one on the market that does work with Tylenol, at least I think it does. Now, a 2018 article in the NCBI states that the Freestyle Libre is also the only CGM system on the market with no acetaminophen interference. It says Dexcom and Medtronic CGM systems give falsely high readings uh, when a patient takes acetaminophen. But when I read through my 136 page Freestyle Libre user guide, who reads the guides? Well, again, I do. So you don't have to. <laughs> I honestly couldn't find information to support that claim. So I guess it works if you believe the article, um, unless you want to try it yourself. Let me know if you've already encountered a false reading or a correct reading while using the Libre mixed with Tylenol. So I hope today's information was helpful. Once again, I'm Ben, I'm Type Me, and I'll see you next time.